Hey everybody, Ronald here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the KiCad One Wizard on your KiCad projects. Now, the main instructions that I've written for this program does actually say that there are actually two methods you can follow for setting it up on your system, but I'm only really going to go through one of them because there's not really that much of a difference between the two. To be honest, it kind of really comes down to uh, personal preference. But I'll, when we get to the instructions, I will very briefly explain the differences between the two and why you might want to go for one over the other. Right, so all we need to do now is if we go over to the, re the repository and head down to the uh, uh, install and setup. I will put links down in the description below, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, so the method I'm going to go for is the git clone method. Now the real difference between the two is that one of them uses git to clone the project and the other one just downloads the files directly from GitHub. So if you uh, stumble across this plugin and want to use it and you just want to download it, you know, the button's right there, you can download the zip file. There's instruction on how to go through that uh, and actually have it running. Uh, that is pretty much the main difference between the two. Um, I mean, if you click on the instruction for the get download method, all it really does is just says download the file and then unzip it. And then the rest of the instructions are pretty much the same. Now, why would I go uh, one over the other? The download is pretty straightforward. If you're just trying it out and you want to see if it's any good, you know, I would say, yeah, use the download method and go on with it. If you never use git, then there's no point of trying to learn if you just want to try something out. The git clone method is pretty useful because that usually means that you are quite proficient or at least you're, you have some experience with git and so you're more likely to take advantage of some of the other features that git provides such as git submodule. With git submodule, I mean I've not um, done this before, I've not done a video on this but there's plenty of documentation. Git submodule allows you to pretty much integrate other repositories within your repository. So imagine you've created a KiCad uh, project and you want to keep everything locked together. So if that way you can kind of remove the chance of losing uh, access to tools that you might say want to go back to using in a few years. Anyway, so let's go to it. Uh, so git clone. All I'm really going to do is just follow the steps. So I'm just going to copy the first instruction. Uh, and if you open a terminal, and head. I'm just going to do it over on the desktop and we'll do, I'll just paste that across. That should work. Yep. And let's get it down. It should be very quick. When that is done, the next thing you need to do is uh, get into that directory where you just cloned it. And you're in there. And then last thing you need to do is run this command. What this command is going to do is install all the dependencies that you need to get this plugin up and running. Now, the next thing you are likely going to need, uh, the next step is said makes uh, make a note of the location uh, where the plugin is installed. In a terminal, the easiest thing you can do is type in uh, pwd, which tells you the current location of the file that you're the folder you're in. Uh, and so, the final thing you need to do is set it up. Now, let's go into the setup instructions. Now. Uh, there's a few key notes that uh, it's basically pointing out that you need to read. Uh, it basically is saying, uh, if you are a Mac user, please make a note that you may not be able to use Node. You may have to use Node.js and you may even have to give it the full path to Node. There was an issue found by a forum member who was using Mac and this was the solution that was required to get it to work for them. Um, and I'll point it out in a second what I mean by that. Uh, if you're using Ubuntu, there's a chance that you can't use Node, that you have to use Node.js instead of Node. Uh, but it'll all become clear in a second once we go through it. And the other point, which is kind of the very first one is, um, if, because we haven't installed Kanka globally, i.e. it's not accessible to any, uh, program through the terminal, uh, through your system variables, uh, we will need to, uh, one, we'll need to use Node, uh, to, but we need to Kanka to use Node to call the script. And secondly, we need to actually give you the full path to where the script is located. So whenever the instructions makes a reference to Kakad Bomb Wizard, we need to replace it with something like that. But don't worry about it, we'll go through and it's actually pretty straightforward once you go through the setup. All right, so the setup is just basically six steps and just generating the file you want. So the first thing is we need to open up the uh, Kakad and then open the schematic uh, that we want to use. Uh, so in this case, it's going to be, um, I mean, I'm not even going to pronounce that. Let's go with this one here. And the next thing you need to do is hit tools and generate bill of material. You can just hit the button, the bomb icon here, but uh, it's easier to, to write this instruction that is to describe the icon for me. So there we go. 
Now I've already set up the uh, whistle to generate HTML, but we'll you know we'll do that in a, in a second again anyway. Uh, so the next thing you need to do is add, uh, click on the add plugin. So we'll go add plugin. The next thing we need to do, uh, find the location where the wizard is located. So it's going to be, in my case, it's going to be desktop, CACAD bomb wizard, that's where I installed it. And we need to tell it where that is located. So CACAD bomb wizard.js. Now, it's a bit, um, it's a little bit annoying because the way it kind of works, let's get rid of that there. Hmm. This, there we go. For some reason, this window popped up out of nowhere. So once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is give it a name. I mean, I've already used HTML, so I'm just going to go and just type CSV. Let's do a CSV output. It could be any name you want. There you go, CSV. It could be any name you want, uh, but just make sure that the name means something to you, at least it tells you what you need. Okay, so we've done that, and now we need to update the command line with one of the th three options. If we want to generate HTML, uh, we need to, let's get, just move this thing down. If we want to generate uh, HTML, we need to, do, 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 do. so this is the reference I was talking about, so CACAD bomb wizard, we need to replace that with whatever, uh, if we haven't installed CACAD wizard globally, we need to replace it with, with node, and then the location of the path. So we already have the location for the script, so we just need to stick node in front of it. In some systems, you may have to type in node.js, but for me, I know node will work. The next thing I need to do is put these three parameters. These are actually parameters built in to KiCad. It's basically telling the build of material plugin uh, to give it uh, to give it certain information, like the uh, percentage i means give it the XML file that it generates when it creates a bomb. The uh, percentage O is basically saying give it the where the, uh, give it the output location where you want to stick the um, build of material, and the final parameter, the final quoting is the type that you want to use. And so in this case, I want to use CSV, so it should have been this one here actually. I copied the wrong one there, so it should be in that. And that is it. All I have to do now is just hit generate, and successful. And it's done it, and it even tells you at the bottom the exact location where it's at. But if you go back over to here, close that down, go back to the main manager, file manager, you can see that it's just stuck it there in the motherboard.csv. We can open that up if we wanted to. Um, if we actually go back to that, and just go back to the bill of material. So the only difference between the two is that the first one I already, gener I already created it for HTML. So if I hit generate that, and go back to the manager, which is located there. You can see it's generated the HTML, we can open that, and that's the uh, HTML or the web page version of that project. So that is it for me. If you want to find me online, I'm over on Twitter, so my username is Optical Worm. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. See you later. Bye.